And that really signalled to the humanitarian community that the rules of the game had changed and that no longer were uh, issues of independence necessarily true. Um, that the people involved in the conflict were now seeing people who were formerly neutral as being part and parcel of one side or another of the conflict. Many aid workers also have to serve in the toughest troubled spots to offer help to those in need, but often they're the ones who had to pay the ultimate price. Most recently, 10 medical workers on humanitarian mission in Afghanistan were shot and killed by the Taliban at point blank, including a British surgeon, Dr. Karen Wu. Humanitarian workers are, are protected under international humanitarian law. The difficulty is in making sure that they know what the, um, the law is, but also in knowing what the humanitarian community stands for. You know, the issues of neutrality, as I was saying before, impartiality, independence um, and commitment to deliver humanitarian assistance and it's because they don't necessarily see a difference between the the enemy side and what um, the humanitarian community is doing there to deliver assistance then that's where where the main issue is for many aid agencies understanding the local dynamics and cultural sensitivities are critical to their mission Aid organizations like Mercy Relief has served in many disaster and conflict-prone areas, including Afghanistan and Iraq. The team understands well how it's like to work on unfamiliar grounds and would leave no stones unturned in ensuring the safety of their aid workers. We all know danger lurks everywhere and anywhere. Right? So it's very important for us to anticipate and also uh, anticipation based on our own assessments. We impose some certain curfews on ourselves and more for the safety of our, our, of our teams uh, who are on the ground. So because if you look at a lot uh, in Aceh, uh, uh, during the, uh, before the, the peace treaty signing, uh, there were shootings, you know, uh, shots taken at uh, 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 relief uh, workers and also relief vehicles. Uh, and uh, this, were, this took place a lot of, most of the time uh, uh, during the night. So we have to ensure, we have to be prudent ourselves, you know, when we do our planning, uh, when we send our guys on the field, into the field to, to actually do, uh, do uh, uh, to extend assistance. The rising incidents of violence against humanitarian aid workers have shocked many aid workers all around the world. But that has not dampened their spirits to serve those in need. They're guided by a sense of mission and reneging on this sacred duty would tantamount to turning a blind eye to human sufferings and the value of human life. If there are no humanitarian uh, aid workers or aid organisations present, then these people aren't going to be getting any assistance. So that's why they're, they're being involved there in order to take and uh, promote the ideas of humanity uh, in these situations to those who are, who are most affected by these disasters. Preserving the sanctity of humanity, I think that's that's something which uh, any sane or uh, decent uh, human being would uh, would have in, in in ourselves. You know, so I, I don't think we will go down that way because uh, I you know I think we are all very confident of that. You know, the uh, the world is not going down that way in terms of uh, just. Uh, forsaking uh, uh, those in need because of security reasons or because of the, the dangers of, uh, 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 that, they are, you know, that humanitarians are facing. 